This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. We're going to talk Be'ezrat Hashem about a um, few topics tonight and we're going to try to reveal and to uncover some deep secrets that are actually very simple to figure out and to understand on our own even though that they are very they're treasured in a very inner place sometimes it's very hard even to believe that that inner archive is exist and accessible for us but in the end of the day we all have our amazing very very developed system of senses that is allowing us to feel and to understand those things on our own and to get those sparks and those wonderful inner illuminations once in a while so with that we're going to start talking about this amazing way that the maker of the universe revealed his wisdom especially to the people of Israel to that great family and with the intention of them taking that to the next level to the next step of being light to the whole wide world the fact that the Creator that he himself is infinity the blessed infinity the Ensof Baruch Hu the endless the blessed endless found a way to bring himself to constrict himself to minimize himself to physicality to a, an earthen world this is the biggest wonder of them all for us to think about Hashem is to have a spiritual path in our lives it's to become spiritual but also spirituality is a creation because spirits are creation it's a certain physical very gentle form of being it is something that was made by the maker and all those layers even though that they're very very gentle very very thin very very light they are still earthen they're still made by him and for him to be covered for him to be minimized because of that fact that he is the blessed infinity it's an impossible mission that only someone that is able to do impossible things can do that is the greatest wisdom that is the greatest wonder of them all and the first main <coughs> revealing of Hashem's unity was in that great stand that the people of Israel received the holy tablets that Hashem made the tablets from the sapphire stone and in Sefer Yetzirah the book that we believe that was written by Avraham Avinu in the Hakdama of the Ravad on that book the Ravad is explaining on the sapphire stone that it was Sapirit the sapphire stone was spirit it's a creation of Hashem it was in his writing it in his holy Hebrew language Shehi Sapirit that it is spirit it was made by Hashem Hashem made those stones the sapphire stone not the sapphire stone that you can buy in the market we're talking about the sapphire stone that is the stone that is shining under the throne of honor a very spiritual thing but still it's a thing that Hashem made it's a creation and it's a spirit so even though that the tablets we're talking about the first tablets that were given first by Moshe to the people of Israel that were supposed to be given and then Moshe decided to break them but in the beginning they were created by Hashem and they were totally spiritual but they were still in a lower level than Hashem himself and onto those holy tablets Hashem carved he imprinted the words the letters in Hebrew the letters of the Ten Commandments and how was a 
Hashem writing it, he was sending the light into the stones, into those tablets, and he carved them from one side to the other. So the first letters that were seen were not even written. They made a hole, they made a tunnel into that spiritual stone. So like, think about this highest, most spiritual that is beyond our power of understanding of the first way that Hashem, the maker of the universe, formed himself into physicality. It was so spiritual that it was not even written. Just he moved the stone that was spiritual to the sides and created tunnels of light. And the endless light of the maker passed through those tablets and illuminated the world with the Ten Commandments. We're talking about something that we're going to call it light, but it's higher than light in any possible way. It's Hashem Himself. It's in the blessed infinity itself. I think that the best thing to do with this chair is to make it useful for another <coughs> person. Ushpizin, we need to dedicate a chair for him on Sukkot. So out of the love of the maker of the universe to his children and his endless will to reveal himself, to form himself, his wisdom into something that we will be able to discuss, that we will be able to relate to, that we will be able to be able to to, to, to understand, to think about, to be illuminated by, that is going to be our source of light for the future, for that he minimized himself and constricted himself in such an enormous way that is unbelievable, that we cannot grasp into letters of the Torah, into the Hebrew letters of the Torah. And we need to understand that blessing. We need to understand that until today, the words that we are using are all the letters of the Torah. Because even in time of creation, before of that great stand of Muhammad Har Sinai that we received the Torah on in, in, in Bereshit, it's written that Hashem said certain things, Hu Amar Vayehi, He said, and things started to roll, things started to happen. Because of the power of speech, and we have many evidence for that, that the Maker created the world by that holy speech of the Hebrew language. Like that we know that Hashem called the first man Adam. He called him Adam, and there's a reason why he was called Adam. He's the first blood, Aleph Dam, first man. He's the first blood, first form of blood, Adam. And also he has two natures inside of him. One that he came from the ground, from the Adama. Adam came from the Adama, from the soil, from earth. And also the second verse that is teaching us about the spiritual nature of Adam is telling us on Adam, Adame Elion. I will show my... Um, um, I will reveal the spiritual nature that is within me about Adam, the soul part of the person that is like the divine one to the highest one that I am similar to him in a way like that Hashem said to the angels Nase Adam let's make a man a person Betzalmenu in our shape Betmutenu in our figure so we have been blessed to have a spiritual figure. Of course, that the figure and the tselem, eloka, is not talking about the flesh, even though that the flesh is holding many secrets. But it's a lower level. It's the next level. It's always downgrading and downgrading. And that's how we learn. Also about the letters of the Torah. The first revealing was in the Ten Commandments. And then we have the Bible. We have the Torah. We have the, 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 the prophets that came later on. And then we have the Tanaim's wisdom. And then the Amoraim's generation with the Mishnayot. And then the Gemara, the Talmud. And then more and more commentaries and wise, righteous people that are breaking down the wisdom into more and more letters. Breaking down the sparks and 
also the souls are enjoying the same nature. That the first soul of Adam and Eve were holding the whole spiritual structure of the souls within them. They were gigantic souls. They were holding all of us within them. And all of our complete beings were aspects of their figure, of their form. So the form that we're holding, the chelek eloka mimal, the portion of godliness from above, is the soul, is the neshama. And the verse is saying, ki chelek Hashem amo. The portion of Hashem, which portion? The one that we just said, our chelek eloka, is his people, is his nation. We are one with him in ways that cannot be described in words. And even if all the seas were full with ink and all the reeds and, uh, would be pens to write, and we're going to try to write down all the wisdom, there is endless amount of wisdom because the wisdom is the expression of the blessed endless himself. So there is no end to the wisdom. And the Torah is wider than the sea. Now, what are we doing with all of that? How we will find time in our short lives, even if they will be hopefully complete to 120 with great health, to learn and to be educated and to, to be exposed to great wisdoms. In 20, 120 years, a person can barely understand one drop of, of the ocean. If you'll investigate one leaf, one, one, one cloud, one flower, you're going to try to investigate, to learn the science of it, only the physical side of it. You will never finish. The wisdom is so wide, there are so many details. You can go into endless amounts of layers to understand more and more, and it will never end. Because the limited world of physicality is a reflection of the infinity that is beyond spirit. But the Maker created us as time travelers, real ones, not fake ones, real time travelers, because we are traveling in time. Time is also a creation. Time is not something that really exists in reality of the Maker that is beyond time, because Hashem is eternal, so there is no time. But we are traveling in time, not talking about Re reincarnation and coming from one lifetime to another. This is another story. But also here in the present time, we are traveling inside time. Hashem minimized His own form into 600,000 main general souls of the people of Israel. And all those souls together are experiencing the world. And by that, being a hand to the Maker to complete His journey on earth. Because when the Maker created the world, He sent the light of His own Spirit. Like the, the first word in the Holy Tablets, in the, same com the, in the Ten Commandments, is saying, Anochi. Hashem told us, Anochi Adonai Elohecha. The word Anochi that is talking about Hashem Himself, the first presentation of Hashem to the public of Israel, and Hashem is saying, Anochi, you break down, like we explained, always when you want to figure out something, you're breaking it down. You're trying to understand it. You're chewing it with your teeth. We have 32 teeth in our mouth. And 32 is the normal value of the word heart. And the heart understands. And the teeth are also wisdom teeth. Because the way that the heart understands is in the same way that the teeth are chewing and grinding and breaking things into their particles for us to figure out and understand. And that's our, the way that our heart is perceiving information, feelings, emotions, all kinds of senses, and digesting them slowly but surely. So the word Anochi is a combination of four letters. Aleph, Nun, Chav, and Yud. The letter Aleph is representing the word Anochi, myself. Ana, I am, Hashem told us. Nafshi, Nun, my spirit. 
נדחף כתבית, I wrote it, יהבית, I gave it to you, the last letter you do. I gave you my spirit, Hashem is telling us. אנא, נפשי, כתבית, יהבית. I wrote my spirit and I gave it to you. When he handled the Torah, the wisdom, the expression of his wisdom, he actually gave us his soul, nafshi, my spirit. I wrote it down to you, for you to have it. It's a gesture of love. It's the main revealing of love of the maker. And if you look deep into the word love in Hebrew, of course, Ahava. The way that you write the letters of the word Ahava is Aleph, He, Vet, He. This pattern has a movement. After you said Aleph, He, Bet, He, the next step is Gimel, He, Dalet, He, 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 Vav, He, and continuing. So the letter He is representing the spirit because it's a letter that stands inside of the name of Hashem Yud Kei Vav Kei and all the rest of the letters the Aleph, the Bet, the Gimel are all the particles of creation so the spirit of Hashem is the love that is surrounding the Aleph from both sides and surrounding the Bet and surrounding the Gimel and surrounding the Dalet and He and Vav so there is a spirit of Hashem that is surrounding and protecting us as we know that that the whole world is surrounded with his honor. And Rabbi Yochanan called the coverings, the outfits of people, all those coverings, they are the honor of the person. How will you know that that person is the king, is the minister, he is a very honorable person because of his royal garments, because of his important clothing. If you see those two people without a shirt, you will never be able to recognize who is the king and who is his slave. You won't be able. But when he will wear his uniform and the other one will wear his royal garments, you're going to know. There's no doubt about it. So the king is dressing himself and covering himself with creation and he's surrounding us with this great aura, with this great soul that is reviving and protecting us and giving us life and also from within. And also from within because he is the source of life. And when the Maker wanted to create the world because of His mercifulness, because of His kindness, and there was no space to create the world because it was all the blessed infinity. And you don't have space inside of infinity. It's all full of His godliness. There is no, was no place to create. So Hashem found the place, realized how impossible those words are. That's what we said before, that the only one that can make impossible thing possible can create the world. Because it's impossible. And the maker of the universe saw that there was no place to create the world because the infinity was filled with his being. So therefore he found the central spot in infinity. There is no central spot place in infinity. You don't have a center to infinity. No matter where you're going to put your finger, it won't be the center. You can walk to the side and there you have more. There is no spot to put your finger, but he found the center. You know where the center is? In the heart. He found the place inside of himself. He was the infinity. He was not an outsider to infinity and he was brainstorming how to handle the table, how to create the world in physics. No. It was all him. It was his unity. And nothing but him. So he found a place in his own center that only the person can find his own center, can know his heart, what his heart is telling him, where is the right place to find the location. Like King David said, 
I will not give sleep to my eyes until I'm going to find a place for Hashem. Like that Hashem did for us. And then he found Mount Zion. He found Yerushalayim. He found the place in his heart because he decided to dedicate his life to that mission. And that mission was to find a place for Hashem. So he was the one to find it. Moshe was the one to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt, not because he was the chosen one, because he was the person that decided that he will not eat and not drink until the redemption will take place. And Mashiach also going to be that one. Mashiach not going to be the best scholar, the wisest. He will be the one that Hashem will declare that his heart is the purest. That's who Mashiach will be. The one that his heart will make him force Hashem to bring redemption. That he will fight with Hashem like Moshe fought with Hashem. Like Eliyahu and Avi fought with Hashem. Like all the true righteous people were arguing with Hashem, battling. Moshe Rabbeinu climbed to a place that is called Marom. Alita la Marom Shavit Hashevi. He went up to a place that is called Marom. That on that place it's written that Hashem is alone in no one but Hashem. No, Moshe went up. For Moshe is also a person that for him there is no nature. You say Hashem is there alone. He's not, okay, no one is allowed to enter to Marom. He doesn't ask no one. Moshe is climbing. He was already in Marom. And he went up there and he sees Hashem sitting and learning the Torah. And Moshe grabbed the tablets. Moshe held the Torah. And they are starting to argue and to fight. And Moshe is trying to pull the Torah from Hashem and to bring it down to the world, to the people of Israel. And when we're saying the people of Israel, remember, Moshe was the same one that was arguing with all Am Israel and with Hashem Itbarach to bring out all the neshamot of Erev Rav that were foreign people from different nations, Gentiles, that were also suffering in Egypt with the people of Israel. And Moshe did not give up on them as well. Moshe, he doesn't see anything with his eyes, like we say in Hebrew. Lo ro'e ba'enayim. He doesn't look, he doesn't care. He, do he has a heart, and his heart is beating. You know why? Because Hashem reflects his light on Moshe. This is why the word Hashem is He Shin Mem, and Moshe is Mem Shin He. Same letters, just the reflection, just from the other side. He's standing here and showing the will of Hashem. When Moshe took the tablets, Gavar Kocho Shel Moshe, Moshe overpowered Hashem. He found a way to pull out the tablets from Hashem and to bring it down. And it was the will of Hashem. Mysterious are the ways of Hashem. Nistarot And Moshe took the tablets and he's going down with them and he is willing to hand them to the people of Israel. And what he sees with his eyes, people are dancing around the golden calf and sinning. An impossible thing to understand how... The humiliation, the insulting of that moment, the, the Torah, the wisdom of Hashem, the spirit of Hashem, all that great love that we just described is now about to be handed out to the people and they are surrounding an idol, a golden calf, dancing with their lust, with their desires. Moshe took that upon himself to break the tablets. Can you understand the risk? What did he did? Without the Torah, there is no reason and purpose for Hashem to keep the world maintained and, 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 and held and exist. Moshe was about to destroy the world. He risked the whole creation. He broke the tablets. The first expression. The unconditional love of the Maker that we just explained was just given to Moshe, a loyal messenger. And he's taking them, going to give them to the next level, to break it down to the people, to make them from animals, to make them people, to give them soul. And they're sinning. 
He took that upon himself to risk his existence, like Moshe is saying. And if you're not going to forgive them, next level, right? After they sinned, after Hashem became upset and angry and wanted to kill them all. And Moshe is fighting with Hashem again and telling them, you're going to forgive them completely. And if not, erase me from the book that you wrote. Erase me from the book, it means that, God forbid, every time that his name will be mentioned, he will be mentioned as Imach Shmo Bezichro. Erase his name and will be forgotten. And no one will remember him anymore. Moshe took that on himself. He wanted to be that in that way. He was willing to accept that. Such love inside the hearts of the true righteous ones. Not the fake ones that are walking around in the world with their nice suits and playing the game and giving the show. The real true righteous ones are the ones that are jumping into the fire like Abraham, into the water like Moshe and Nachshon ben Aminadav, into the desert like Yoshua Binun that doesn't know what will happen, like Shmuel the prophet that in the world to come, Shmuel, he was welcome to join, to take his spot in heaven. And Shmuel the prophet said to Hashem, I'm not entering heaven. For no reason. In the book of visions of Rabbi Chaim Vital, Rabbi Chaim Vital is testifying that he was called to see his spot in heaven and he saw an empty seat and he asked who that seat is, who it belongs to, and they told him Shmuel Anavi. He asked where Shmuel Anavi is at. They told him he is walking in circles on the walls of Yerushalayim, refusing to enter to his place in heaven until the redemption will take place. And he's walking and praying day and night, day and night. He doesn't want no heaven. Who has time for heaven when our siblings are suffering? While people are drowning? That is the heart of the true righteous ones. They're not caring about their safety, about their luxury, about their confidence. They're just throwing themselves from one level to the next. Moshe was chosen because he was a loyal shepherd. King David was chosen for him to be a loyal shepherd. All the true righteous people were simple people that were chosen because their heart was shining in great light. That is the Torah. That is the great expression of the wisdom and the love, unconditional love of Hashem to His children. Now, like we asked before, but what are we doing with that? What are we supposed to do with all of that? We have our 120 years to learn. We're barely going to cover one drop from the ocean. It's not the truth. In physicality, it's the truth. But not in your spirit. Because each and every one of us has an inner access to infinity. And that's the root of your soul. You are chelek eloka mima'al. You are a portion of godliness from above. And like that it's impossible to constrict the godly light into letters. It's also impossible to divide it into portions and to put portions inside of individuals. So it means that inside of you, betoch ami, Anochi Yoshavet, Hashem Himself is, sits inside of us, inside of each and every one of us. How in the world He is doing it? It's impossible. Right, exactly. That is His ability to make the impossible possible. And that's what He is doing. Moshe took all the people of Israel and put them into two meters square. They were all standing in one spot. You know what's going to happen in Redemption Day? I'm going to tell you. In Redemption Day, after the resurrection of the dead, all the souls that will have the merit to be redeemed, we're talking about billions of people throughout all the generations, all of them are going to stand to trial. After the trial, everyone that will have the merit in that trial to stand and to see the face of Hashem, to accept the face of Hashem, the Shekhinah Akdosha, all of those billions of people that ever lived will stand together in one spot inside the temple of Hashem in Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim... The land of Israel is in the size of New Jersey, maybe a little bit less. You're talking about billions of people standing in the temple in Yerushalayim on Mount 
on Harabait, on the mountain of, of, of the holy temple, on Haramoria. How can that be done? It's impossible. Exactly. The one that can do it will do it. And you know, think about your individual experience in that moment, in that time. You know what's going to happen? You're going to meet all the people that you're dreaming to meet. If you have a dream to meet all your ancestors, to know the history, to meet, to see the faces of all your forefathers, of all your people, you'll have the merit to do so. Because Hashem will remove the screen of the limitation of time and He will uncover the freedom from the limitation of physicality and you're going to stand there with no limitations of place and time and you'll be free from all of that to experience His grace and the unity of all particles of creation. And in that journey, that all the souls that will have the merit to see the face of Hashem in Yerushalayim, in that journey that everyone will take from His place to Yerushalayim, to that time that it will take place in Yerushalayim, in that journey, all of us, we're going to see the face of Mashiach. There's going to be time above time. That everyone will meet anyone they want. And you'll have time. Because no time will rush you to your destiny. Because your destiny will be to live eternal life with all your loved ones. With all the ones that cares for you. And on the side of the mountains, all the deers will stand. And all the beautiful animals. And all the birds. And all the cats. And all the rabbits. And all the cows. And all the sheep. And all the dolphins will swim in the sea, and all the whales, and all the fish, and everyone will be part of creation. And in great harmony, the creation of all generation, without the covering of time, will be united as one. And the wonders of the, of, of the redemption that we came out of Egypt, over 3,000 years ago that took place back then, the wonders and miracles that happened back then won't be told anymore, not because they will be forgotten, just because the day will be nothing compared to the wonders that we will see with our healthy eyes, hugged and surrounded with all our loved ones, in the day that Mashiach will reveal himself. In the day that Hashem will give the strength to Mashiach to reveal Himself. In the day that we will be able to enjoy, that we'll have the vessels to enjoy that great illumination. Now those, so to say, humble ones will say, how can we have the vessel for all of that? It's impossible. Don't worry. It's Hashem's work to make it possible. And we already saw that He can do impossible things. And He will. And He is. And we're thinking to ourselves, I'm so broken, I'm so tired, I'm so lonely, I'm so, I'm so poor, I'm so like all over the place. You don't have a clue who you are because you fell into a place of forgetfulness. And you don't know who you are. You don't know who your ancestors are. You don't have a clue and the tiny understanding of who were your great, great, great parents, grandparents, 800 years ago. You are a descendant of holy oaks, of holy pillars that the world is standing by their merit. And you don't remember that, of course. An angel came and hit you above your mouth and took your memory away and you don't have no memory but to Hashem's eyes it's all eternal it's all open wide and clearly revealed and you are a branch in the tree of life we are all branches of the tree of life when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, and they ate from the tree of knowledge, from the fruits of the tree of knowledge. Etz hada'at tovera. They were kicked out of the garden. They were exiled for them not to eat from the fruit 
of the tree of life that was the second main tree in the garden of Eden and we've been kicked out and now when we are looking into our souls how we will define our souls as our source of life and that tree of our families are the tree of our lives because that's how we have been formed into life we've been conceived and then came out to the world we got our lives from our parents and from Hashem as a third partner and we've been formed into physicality with a godly living soul within us so where is that tree of life inside the garden of Eden or outside of the garden of Eden or maybe the question is were we really kicked out of Eden or that only our awareness was kicked out of the garden of Eden our mind is in the exile but our bodies are still walking on earth and earth is the creation of Hashem and we're traveling the people of Israel were walking for 40 years in the desert of Sinai. Desert of Sinai is a tiny desert. You can cross that desert in three and a half days. Regular walking. They circled it for 40 years. Hashem made it happen. And also our reality today is that we are under the perfect, complete supervision of our Maker that in his goodness covered our eyes from seeing the truth because a person cannot contain Hashem's greatness and to stay alive and therefore he is still until today minimizing and constricting <clears throat> and shrinking the light into our teaspoons vessels for us to be able to take some sparks and to elevate them and not to crash from the great illumination that is surrounding us big time. So therefore the person should be very happy and grateful for that that he was created with a soul, with a godly soul within, that that is the inner axis. That is the gate of the flipping sword that is blocking the entrance back to the Garden of Eden. What is that flipping sword that is holding us out? We're afraid to be cut. Those are your thoughts that have two sides, like that sword that has two sides. Negative thoughts and positive thoughts. And we need to learn how to handle our thoughts. And when you're focusing your mind in the positive thoughts, and you're being hopeful and faithful and loyal and positive and building and constructive and developing and hoping, and being a mensch and being a happy person, a positive person, by that you're enjoying an illumination from your soul that is talking to you in a positive way from within. Like we all enjoyed the illumination of coming back to Hashem and doing tshuva, and Hashem was very graceful with each and every one of us, or else we wouldn't be here. We saw the grace of Hashem. We saw the loving kindness of Hashem. That's why we're here. We were looking for that water. We're asking for water. We're thirsty. So we're looking for the Torah. But not the negative Torah. Not the judgmental Torah. Not the rebuking Torah. Not the hurting Torah that is destroying families. If the person had a marriage to purify himself, Zacha, the Torah becomes a potion of life for him. Naset lo sam chayim. But if he did not get to that level of being purified enough to enjoy the potion of life, Naset lo sam mavet, it becomes lethal, poison for him. He's drinking the same letters and it's poisoning him. It's venom. It's lethal. Because he's not aiming himself to listen to the voice of Hashem. And he's listening to the advice of the snake. The advice of the Yetzirah. That can dress itself into sages. That can dress itself into gigantic rabbis. That can dress itself into very inspirational speakers. That will talk negative. And will break the spirits 
of their students and will plant and seed despair and sadness and sorrow and black bitterness into the ears and hearts of their followers, God forbid. And that is our mission, to listen to the inner side of our souls, to listen to the positive voice and sound of Hashem, of Hashem's unconditional love that is expressing to us, Anochi Adonai Elohecha, I am Hashem your God. Lo yelecha Elohim achirim al panai. Don't replace me in no other idol. Those were the two commandments that Hashem Himself told the people of Israel. All the other eight were said by Moshe. When Hashem opened His mouth, He said two things. Hey, I love you. Don't walk away. Those are the only two things that all of us as public, we heard from Hashem. Anuchi Adonai Elohecha. I gave you the Torah. It's my spirit. I wrote it down. I give it to you. Now, take it. Please don't leave me. Don't go worship no one else but me. Be one with me. I love you. It was a wedding. And now we've been divorced. But you can bring back the divorced wife. And we're begging to rebuild the house. To rebuild the temple of Hashem. To rebuild... You know where the temples of Hashem are located? Between your two temples. In your mind. Connect yourself. And then the third temple will be revealed. In the day of redemption. In the complete salvation day. And it's happening in the present time. The name of Hashem is Havaya Baruch Hu. The blessed present time is Him eternal time in the present time. Relate yourself to that in time of quiet, in time of observation, in time of meditation, in time of connection. Find a quiet space like Hashem did. To create the world He had to remove Himself to the sides. Remove the world a little bit to the sides. Create an empty space for Hashem's light. Look for the center of your life. Create an empty space over there and let your soul shine. Thank you so much for being the inspiration and the illumination for me to be able to bring those Divrei Elohim Chaim out to the world. I never, ever know what I'm about to speak when I'm teaching Torah. Shalev and I spoke about it while we drove here. I never prepared a class in my life. I'm standing and the soul's needs are all being seen in the eyes of Hashem and Hashem is allowing me to reflect the light that belongs to you, that He sends to you. And I'm so happy and grateful to have that Mary to pass the message to you today for you to be able to keep on marching to Zion and never to stop. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Emuna Project is a non-profit organization. To support this work, please make a purchase from our online store or donate through emuna.com. Thank you. My new book, Return to Your Root, is now on Amazon and emuna.com.